Doctor, I certainly want to thank you for everything you've done for me. Mr. Chappell, I'm still not sold on you leaving here five days ahead of schedule, unless you can pass one final test. Well, I thought everything was set. Oh, Miss Todd didn't know of this test. All right, Doctor, what do I have to do? Autograph your photograph for me, please. I have one here. lawyer's apartment. Wait. Please, let me do this myself. I know the building. I know Alex's bachelor pad. I know it better than I know the rehabilitation center. There's nothing to worry about. Well, you said he would be at his office this time of day. Well, that's right, but there's a spare key under the rug outside the apartment. The gift I have to pick up is in the upper left-hand drawer of the desk. Alex has always bought my anniversary presents. Well, uh, I'm not against the idea. I just want to know precisely what you have to do. There is nothing to it. <laughs> I even remember the number of steps up to the entrance. One. Two. Charles the doorman will hurry across to greet me. Charles will not say anything so clumsy in the circumstances as glad to see you again. Chapel, welcome. So glad you're up and about again. Thank you, Charles. Maybe I'll be lucky, the only passenger. Then I can really do it all myself without asking for any help. to the right, leading to the fire escape. And then a bit further down the corridor, apartment 5E. key to the service door under the carpet.
<laughs> you thought about what we're going to do when Tony comes home? Oh, I really don't know, darling. Well, I'm sure living with him now will only change from difficult to impossible. Oh, I only know, Alex, I'm going to need you more than ever. Mm. Well, what am I going to do when he gets home, darling? Sit around the house all day reading old scripts to him? to get back to the office. Thanks a lot. Well, I've got to get Tony's books in shape. I'm sure that he'll want to see them when he gets there. But he can't see, darling. Remember? Well, in that case... like a child. Blind child. No, blind children know better. I just blew it. Two, three, maybe four floors. I don't know. I, I couldn't even find Alex's apartment, let alone get into it. I lost my way. Lost my confidence. How's that for self-pity, Miss Todd? And... Standard and squashable. Uh, Charles. Yes, sir? Don't ever go blind. You have to put up with women who see everything and feel nothing. And I am sincerely sorry that I yelled at you. That's all right, sir. I'd appreciate it if the next time you see Mrs. Chapel or Mr. Crawford, if you didn't mention this, it would... Certainly, sir. Sort of take the edge off my triumphant homecoming. I understand, sir. Don't, don't worry. You were, you were never here. And I'm sure everything will work out fine for you, Mr. Chappell. Mr. Todd, shall we go? I'm being hemmed in and suffocated by positive thinking. apartment this afternoon. 
Of course, I won't say anything. But I will not tolerate another outburst of self-indulgence. Peace. Peace. What time is it? 1.45. Right. <laughs> now, if I promise not to wreck it, will you stop at the drugstore? What drugstore? First one you come to. And go in for what? Will that be all, sir? That'll be all. earlier than I expected, too. Liz, Liz, I want you to meet Miss Todd. She's my therapist. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were here. What must you think? Only that Mr. Chapel is a very, very lucky man. Right. Yeah. Oh, Tony, you shouldn't. My favorite. I shouldn't bring her your favorite. Oh, you know what I mean. If you don't know me, who does, huh? Mm, it's beautiful, Tony. Thank you. Wherever did you find it? Oh, we were lucky the first drugstore we passed. Oh, where was that? Not far from Mr. Crawford's apartment. You stopped by Alex's on the way here? Well, I asked Alex to get me a special present, but it wasn't ready. Was Alex home? No. Then how do you know it wasn't ready? Well, he would have left it in the usual place, the left-hand desk drawer. I checked it, but it wasn't there. You went right into the apartment? All by myself. And now I think I'll go to my room. Miss Todd, uh... I hate to get our relationship started off on the wrong foot, but uh, I'm afraid I must mention this. At this stage, is it customary to allow a patient out alone, unprotected? No. It was foolish of me. I'm sorry, Mrs. Trump. Come on. It was my fault. I insisted. That doesn't surprise me. But I still think it was a dumb thing to do. Oh, but I am very proud of you, darling. Just let me change into some slacks. Then I'll come back and see what you want for dinner. Oh, dear God, Mr. Chapel, I'm so sorry. I promise you I wouldn't say anything, and it, it just slipped out. Oh, Kate, it's all right. I thank you for not telling her what an ass I made of myself. Kate, I'm all right in this room. I know the place. Why don't you find your room? Take it easy. Oh, well, I... Uh... I guess I should unpack. Excuse me. Mr. Chapel? Hmm? Your wife is beautiful. Isn't she? Negotiations reached a stalemate, and the various members returned to their respective countries. 
A new delegation is expected to be seated in the near future. Meanwhile, the talks are at a standstill. The forest fire in Inyo County continues to rage. The forests have been again preserved for the last 75 years, and there is great concern for the preservation of wildlife in this devastating fire. There are units from three counties fighting the blaze, and the National Guard is assisting with helicopters and borate bombers. So far, no homes have been destroyed, and it's hoped that the fire will be contained before spreading to residential areas. Folsom Prison is on a full alert basis today, following the death by stabbing last night of a prison guard. Officials said that the guard, Parker James, was killed when trying to break up a yard fight by inmates. Wendell Weaver is being held in the slain. Weaver has been sitting in five years... Slow, slow. The National Weather Service forecasts mostly fair weather today and tomorrow, with some patchy morning coastal low clouds. The predicted high today is 74 degrees. The current temperature is 71 degrees. In the world of sports, the Los Angeles Angels defeated the Detroit Tigers 76 at the Big A last night. The victory marks the third straight for the Halos on the current home stand. On the road, the Dodgers... You know, range is right. Claude Osteen... It's too high. Gary Nolan. The Federal Reserve Board reported today that the factories throughout the country operated at 73.2% capacity during the past quarter. Come in. It's me. All right, it's me. What's the work schedule for today? <laughs> I thought uh, a day off. Maybe a walk along the beach, and then I'll read to you. <laughs> you will read to me the voice of 14 LPs of world's greatest poetry. Hmm? You know, you better be nicer to me, or I'm going to play you all 14. No, they're terrible. <laughs> Why the day off? Oh, you've been working hard. You made good progress. Well, I agree with that, but my reward is a walk along this polluted coast. Oh, thanks a lot. Hmm. That doesn't seem too exciting, does it? No. I'd like to do something new. Now that I have the time, I'd like to do some of the things I never did all the years I've lived here in Southern California. You've been asking me that every five seconds. Fifteen seconds. What was the last stop? Uh, Ocean Avenue. <laughs> Question. What was the last sound you heard? You smacking your forehead. Right. Why? <laughs> because you just realized what I'm doing. Right. How could I have missed? <laughs> Fifteen seconds. Uh, Fifth Street. You know, you're not taking a day off. You're just learning how to find your own way around the city. Brilliant, Kate. Absolutely brilliant. Shall we have some music? Miss Todd said something about one of my old movies being on TV. Did she? I wasn't very tactful of her. Well, it's not that bad. <laughs> What I meant was that, well, she drew your attention to something that, well, let's face it, you can't see. Well, maybe the picture would be better that way. <laughs> Which one is it? The Murderer. Oh, it's a dreadful movie. Tony, if you don't mind, darling, I think I'll go to my room and read. Sure. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Third Street. I got that right today. You did? Am I not marvelous? Well, why shouldn't you now? We've been doing it every day for a week. Harvard Street. And I hope you will not tell Mrs. Chapel anything about our expeditions. Well, we'll wait till you're completely confident getting around on your own, and then you can surprise Mrs. Chapel. Oh, 
You're right, Kate. I am going to give Mrs. Chapel the greatest surprise of her life. Attempt to increase volunteers in all branches of the military. Seven seventy. Right. Right, isn't he? To the penny. <laughs> Hey, did you used to be Anthony Chapel? Oh. Oh, I mean, uh... the answer is yes. That's who I used to be. Good luck. Where to? Anywhere special, or should we just walk? Kate. Let's try the park. I know you will find this very hard to believe, but writers hate me. Oh. True, because I tended to cut their preliminary speeches, cut the furbelows, the fancies, and go to the heart of the matter. And <laughs> perhaps I was right. And this time, I think I'm right, too. Uh -huh. That sounds ominous. I think maybe we better sit down. There's a bench right over here. My wife thinks that you are infringing on our relationship. I don't understand. Hey, you do almost everything for me, and you do it well, and I appreciate it. But she feels that she ought to be doing it. Does that make any sense? You have been so good to me and so good for me. I haven't felt sorry for myself in days. Well, I was going to ask you for a few days off so I could visit my sister in Des Moines. <laughs> Looks like I don't have to ask you now. Let's, let's not say anything to Liz about this. We'll just say that you're going to visit your sister, and then after you're gone, I'll, I'll tell her about it. You understand? Kate? <laughs> I've been working with blind people for 10 years. I think I'd learn not to nod my head when I'm upset. Kate, is there some way? Is there any way I can thank you? There is one thing. If you ever need me, call. Don't just need me. Me too, darling. 
Just promise not to go out of town again. Got to go. I love you. Call you in the morning. I was beginning to think you never would get home. Well, wasteful thinking. Oh, that darling, that's not funny. I was worried about you. I'm well, worried about Kate. She's leaving us. What? Yes, my sister's ill. I'll have to leave. I'm sorry to give you so little notice, but uh, Mr. Chapel's able to take care of himself now. Well, um, we'll miss you. Uh, I'm sure you've been a great help to Mr. Chapel. Tell me. Mm -hmm. There's a surprise waiting for you upstairs. <laughs> Get him out of here! Sorry, sir. Dr. Grant said you... Just can... get out of here! I'm not gonna spend the rest of my life being led around on a leash! This is part of the treatment you agreed to when you went to Dr. Grant. Tell Dr. Grant that I changed my mind. Now, all of you, go away and take Rin Tin Tin with you. Mr. Chapel. Took Dr. Grant three months to get that dog. Now, he went to a lot of trouble for you. My instructions are to begin your indoctrination, which consists of you and this dog getting to know each other. After that, Mr. Cunningham will take over your training. You want me to call Dr. Grant? What's his name? Lucky. We prefer to keep their names simple. What if I do this training and it doesn't work? Then we'll keep trying until we find a dog that suits you. The first few days, you just get to know each other. He follows all simple voice commands. Later, we'll instruct you in hand signals and so forth. And uh, in about three days, we'll start regularly scheduled lessons here at the house. He's quite a dog, Mr. Chapel. Good night, sir. I'll show you out. I'll do this. But I will never again set foot out of this house as long as I live. Sorry you feel that way. It just takes time. You. Let's get acquainted. And the first thing you have to learn how to do is applaud because you just witnessed one of my greatest performances. <laughs> Cancel. It's just a fashion luncheon. No, it's good for you to get out. Well, I'll cut the shopping short and be home by six. Is there anything I can do for you before I go? No. Kate, get away. Mm, quite early. Sure there's nothing I can do? No, thanks. Well, I think I'll take a shower. Have a good time.
Yes, Alex, I can make it. About three o'clock, darling. I'll meet you at the apartment. <laughs> Good. About three o'clock, I'll wait for you there. Bye. Side, 900 consecutive performances in The Man Who Came to Din Din. I certainly should be able to do this. accent shall we use for this gentleman? Once I played a Greek, Anatolian Greek, not like Zorba, a real Greek. Mm. Four bus east. You direct me. Yeah, this is it here, Grandpa. Come on, follow me.
Victoria. Thank you. You're wrong about this country. Young people are very, very nice. Southern California for you, Pops. Where would you like to go? Crescent apartment. See, you're a camera bug. Getting some good shots? Several very hot pants. <laughs> well, if you see anything you want to photograph, just tell me. I'll stop. Next place. I like newspaper. Yeah. You can read mine. Nothing but bad news. Bad news. Bad news. Everyone has some bad news sometimes. gratuity and your paper. You can keep it, Pop. Very kind. Eighty-seven cents totally. Six dollar. Thirty-seven cents. Five. Six. Seven. Is it all there? Correct. Good day. Thank you. Can I help you, sir? Still perfectly able to help myself. Thank you. 
Liz? Yes, darling. Where are you? I'm at the liquor store up the street. Do we need anything? A nice cold bottle of champagne. I feel like celebrating. I got it. I'll be there in a minute. Bye. What are you doing here? Who are you? Daughters. Mrs. Chapel. How do you know who I am? Your husband gave great pleasure. I know you. No. Tony? Tony. Well, I suppose it was silly trying to fool an aficionado. How did you get in here? And what are you doing wearing those ridiculous clothes and that makeup? With a gun. I came here to kill you, Elizabeth. That's right, just like one of those nasty things you read in your morning newspaper. Tony, it's... No, stop it. It's all been said and better. Please, just let me explain. No, I came here to kill you. Funny thing happened on the way to the murder. I did it. Nobody knew I was blind. You realize that nobody has ever played Oedipus who was actually blind? A Gielgud, Schofield, Olivier, Burton, nobody. So what happens now? A whole new script. Wife cheating on her blind husband with his lawyer, his best friend. No court in this country had turned that divorce down. You know what you are? You're a miserable, selfish, sick. Elizabeth? Elizabeth? Mr. Crawford. Get me the police. Mrs. Chapel's been murdered.
This child, how old? Oh, he'll be three. Before, I was photographer. My favorite, children. I'll take a picture of your boy. Oh, that would be wonderful of you. Isn't that fun, sweetheart? The nice man's going to take a picture of you. Oh, I wish you had told me we're going to take his picture. You know, he has the cutest outfit that his grandma just sent him from back east. And I would have put it on him if I known he was going to have his picture taken. All right. I take photograph. You call me taxi, right? Oh, sure. There's a stand right over there. Taxi. Oh. I guess somebody better notify Mr. Chapman. Well, I'd like to, Captain, if it's all right with you. Any special reason? I'd hate for him to hear it on the radio. Yes? Mr. Anthony Chappell, uh, this is a police officer. There's an important matter. I'll let you in. I'm on the second floor, second door to your left. Chapel, I'm Detective Bergman. Would you like to sit down? You sound like you've got bad news. I'm sorry, sir. What happened? Let me help. It's not necessary. I know this room. I was better at this, uh, your wife. Well, that was a shooting. She was found dead in a Mr. Alexander Crawford's apartment. He says he's your lawyer. Now, I can't see you. I don't know if this is some kind of a bad joke. Are you laughing? 
No, I'm not, sir. But how could that happen? Well, it appears he shot her. There were no fingerprints on the weapon, but it was his gun. But he... Uh, Alex was our friend. Well, I wish I could do something for you, Mr. Chappell. Is there anyone to look after you? Well, I was expecting Elizabeth, my wife. Well, can I call someone? No, I'd rather be alone. Well, you must have friends. No, no. Uh, Mr. Chappell, are you up to uh, answering a few questions? If it'll help. Well, did you know if anything was going on between your wife and Mr. Crawford? Nothing I could see, Mr. Bergman. Tony, I just heard it on the car radio. Kate? Kate, uh, this is Lieutenant Bergman of the police. It's Miss Todd. She's my therapist. Miss Todd, I'm glad you arrived. I was worried about leaving Mr. Chapel alone. She was supposed to be on vacation. Well, I was on my way here. I, I forgot my my address book, my glasses, my umbrella. Well, Kate, uh, the lieutenant is not with the Bureau of Missing Property. Mr. Chappell, I want to tell you again how sorry I am. Thank you. You're very kind. Miss Todd? Tony. Oh, Kate, please. Just don't say anything. I'll go make some coffee. I know Mr. Chappell. Are you kidding? He was in and out of here three or four times a week. Mr. Crawford's place was like a second home to him. Got around pretty well, didn't he? Well, no, that was the sad part. She had to lead him around like a baby. You're his nurse. Did you see either one of them yesterday? Not for almost a week. Tell me, what possible reason would you have for suspecting Tony Chappell? I don't know. No, I really don't. Just something got deep. The way he took the news, the fact that he let his nurse go on a vacation just one day before the murder. You know, he was only back from the hospital a couple of weeks. Don't you think it's odd that he took a chance on being alone? Now tell me something. How do you explain a blind man getting from the beach to downtown L.A. into an apartment building, killing his wife and getting back to his house without anyone seeing it? It sounds pretty stupid, doesn't it? Well, we've got Alex Crawford. It's only a matter of making it stick. Have we got him? It was his apartment, his gun, and another man's wife. I've had that same case 50 times. She decides to go back to her husband, fight starts, boom, boom. So he calls the police to report it? Exactly. He's a lawyer. He knows he's got to make it look like somebody else in the building did it. We checked out everybody. Everybody with any possible motivation. Zero. Well, what about the old man? Old man? What old man? Here, the doorman's report, page nine. He mentions an elderly Greek gentleman. He left in the company of a woman and a child just seconds after the gunshot was reported by Crawford's neighbors. Well, if it makes you happy, we'll put out a bulletin for your old Greek. Thank you. Okay, I know it's a pain to say over and over, but tell it to me again, Charlie. He was a typical tourist, a camera, an umbrella, a typical sightseer. In your original statement, you didn't mention an umbrella. Well, I remember now. He came in with an umbrella. An umbrella? No. And he's not the baby's grandfather. I never saw him before. He told me all about how he'd lost his wife just before it was time to make the trip. 
Are all your passengers so revealing? Poor old guy. He said he had a camera. And he asked for a newspaper. Well, he couldn't be blind by any stretch of the imagination, could he? Are you kidding? All right. So far, you've got an old Greek tourist who lost his umbrella. What's so significant about that? Uh, nothing. Except that Chapel's nurse left her umbrella in Chapel's house, and when she mentioned it, he almost snapped her head off. Well, that's interesting, but hardly conclusive. Well, then try this. A man, our Greek tourist, entered an apartment building. An elevator full of people saw him get on the elevator on the fourth floor. So? Uh, so we checked out all the tenants on the fourth floor. And we checked out all the tenants in the entire building. No one had a Greek visitor. Those who weren't home weren't expecting one. So what was he doing there? Who did he go see? Elizabeth Chapel? It had to be. A murderer doesn't go around telling his life story to cabbies and take pictures of babies, not unless he wants to be sure they remember him. You think Tony Chapel is our old Greek tourist? I'll bet my life on it. And the fact that he's blind? Staggering. Of course, he's one of the best actors around. We couldn't prove this with a hundred stacked juries. Well, maybe we could. But we found the umbrella. Oh, we're home. Oh. I hear you. I hear you. Welcome <laughs> home. Come yeah. over here, monster. <laughs> <laughs> How was the walk? Exhausted. I'm not sure who's walking who anymore. I'm hungry. I'm going to make myself some lunch. Can I make you anything? Not right now, thanks. You go ahead. Okay. Kate? Hmm? Did I tell you how much I appreciate your coming back? Oh. I guess it slipped your mind. Well, I do appreciate everything. Well, in that case, would you consider doing me a favor? You got it. What? Would you help me find that umbrella? Oh, I know where the umbrella is. You do? Sure, it's under your bed waiting for Mary Poppins. Oh, ha, ha. No, that is the first place to look. No, I'm sure I left my umbrella in that umbrella stand. Don't worry about it. We'll get you another one. Well, you can't get me another one like that. My sister gave it to me, and she embroidered my initials on it. Oh, about a mile high. Kate? Hmm? I'll get it. Excuse me. May I come in? Please. Um, Mr. Chapel's in there. Please. Tony, it's the lieutenant. Morning, Mr. Chapel. Lieutenant? Well, I hate to bother you, sir, but I'd like to ask Miss Todd a few questions. Sure, go right ahead. Not here, sir, at headquarters. Oh, well, I can't leave Tony alone. Kate, okay, it's all right. I'll be fine, just fine. All right, then. I'll, I'll get my purse, excuse me. Lieutenant? Yes, sir? Why do you want to talk to Miss Todd at headquarters? It's just routine, sir. Lieutenant, will I be long? Just a couple of hours. Thank you for your consideration, Mr. Chapel. Lieutenant? Tony. Ocean, Pacific Coast Highway, North Corner, 20 minutes. 20 minutes? That's right. 20 minutes. It'll be there. How long did you work for Mr. Chapel, Miss Todd? Uh, two months at the rehabilitation center, and um, it's just uh, three weeks at his home. How would you say his progress is? Quite good, after a very slow start. Does he, uh, leave the house very often? Uh, he did until his wife's death. Did you usually go with him? Of course. I mean, you could hardly expect him to be able to go out alone. Even with his dog? 
Oh, he hasn't started that training yet. We, we postponed it after the, uh, after the accident. Well, when you do go out, where do you usually go? Uh, no place in particular, just for drives around the city. Did you ever visit uh, Alex uh, Crawford's apartment? Just once. When was that? Right after Mr. Chapel came out of the rehabilitation center. Any particular reason? Yes, to pick up a present Mr. Crawford had bought for him. Uh, you never went back? No. Lieutenant, why are you asking me these questions? Oh, we'll be done soon, Miss Todd. How often did you go for a ride? Oh, quite often. Almost every day. In your car? No, no. In his? No, uh, in cabs and buses. Why? Mr. Chapel preferred it that way. Well, don't you think that's rather strange? I would think he'd prefer to go in one of his own cars. No, it's not strange at all. You see, eventually he hoped to be able to get around the city by himself. Now, he can hardly do that in a car, can he? And you say he is making progress. Amazing progress. Frankly, I've never seen anything like it. Miss Todd, have you ever seen this man before? It's an artist's concept of someone we're looking for. No. Mm -mm. Thank you. I'll get a car to take you home. Oh, no. No, no. Yeah, don't bother. I can catch a cab. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Oh, Miss Todd. Did you find your umbrella? Your umbrella. When we first met, you misplaced it. Oh. You do remember everything, don't you? Goes with the job. Well, if you're a really good detective, you'll find my umbrella for me. I'll try and do that, Miss Todd. Sergeant, I want you to take a couple of men and go to Crawford's apartment. I want you to look through everything, every inch of it. Lieutenant, we've done that. Well, do it again. I'll meet you there. I want that umbrella. Take me to the garage, driver. It's around and back. Whatever you say, buddy. Anything? Yeah, everything but an umbrella. 
Hey, where'd you get these scrapbooks? Closet. Crawford must have been saving all of Chapel's clippings for him. Operator, this is Police Lieutenant Bergman. I want the home number of Anthony Chapel at the beach. It's probably unlisted. Thanks. I'll dial it. Forget the umbrella. Just get this place cleaned up. Yes, sir. Avenue, Pacific Coast Highway. 